In the last video, we wrote an ELF header. In this video, we use that header plus new machine instructions to write hello world to the standard output stream. The Linux kernel offers certain services. A process running on the system can ask for a service by a system call. The system call we want is named write. We trigger a system call by issuing an interrupt to the CPU. Along with the interrupt instruction, we pass a number that indicates we want a system call. The Linux kernel responds to the system call, and the kernel finds the details of our request in registers in the CPU. We need to gather these details and trigger an interrupt. I am starting a little collection of system calls and processor instructions. The right system call is number 4 on a Linux x86 system. This number 4 goes in register EAX. If a system call takes parameters, the parameter values are in registers EBX, ECX, EDX, and more in some cases. The write system call takes three parameters, file descriptor, buffer, and count. Let's write a hello world program. It begins with an elf header. We copy the elf header from last time. Everything is the same except for p file size and p mem size. We don't know yet the length of this program, so we put blanks there. We want to put the number 4 in register EAX to signal a write system call. How do we put a number in a register? The x86 CPU has an instruction named move. There are many move instructions. Some move an integer to a register from memory. Some move an integer to a register from a register. Some move an integer to memory from a register. The move instruction we want moves an integer to a register from the program text immediately after the instruction code. How do we know what instructions are available? Intel publishes a big book about their CPUs called the Intel 64 and IA32 Architectures Software Developer Manuals. Intel gives away electronic copies for free on their website. Volume 2 contains the instruction set reference. Instructions are listed in sections 3.2, 4.3, and 5.2. This book has thousands of pages. The amount of information is daunting, but if you flip through the instruction set reference looking for simple operations like move, add, compare, or jump, you will find them. Each CPU instruction has a short label, like MOV for move or INT for interrupt. This short label is called a mnemonic. When people do this low-level kind of programming, often they use an assembler, and they use these mnemonics in their assembly language programs. However, we are writing machine language. We need the numerical form of the instruction. The numerical form of each instruction is given in the instruction set reference under the opcode column. These notations are all from the Intel manual. We will see R32 for a 32-bit register, r slash m32 for a 32-bit register or memory region, and imm32 for an immediate 32-bit number. There are 8-bit versions of these as well. In the opcode column, we see not only an 8-bit hexadecimal number b8, but also the notations plus rd and id. Intel uses b for byte, w for word, and d for double word. id stands for immediate double word. When we move data into a register, we need to say which register. Plus RD means we specify a double word register by adding a small offset value to the given byte. Register EAX has offset 0, so for EAX, B8 plus RD is B8. Register ECX has offset 1, so for ECX, B8 plus RD is B9, and so on. In order to move the number 4 into register EAX, we write B8 followed by the immediate 04000000. That's in little endian byte order. To move the number 1 into register EBX, we write BB followed by the immediate 01000000. System call write has two more parameters, buffer and count. Buffer is the address of a region of memory containing the string we want to write. So we want to put the string hello world somewhere in memory. Where can we put a string of characters? We can put a string right here in this program segment. The same segment may contain data as well as instructions. 
we should arrange that the bytes of the string are not executed as instructions. One way to go is to put a system call exit at the end of the instructions and use the space after that for data like the string hello world. Still, we have not determined the address of the buffer. Our hello world string is 10 bytes long. Now, in order to find the address of the buffer and the length of the program, it will help to write a byte count on each line. Wherever a byte count is written, that is the number of bytes that have appeared before that point in the stream. 54 plus 5 bytes is 59, 59 plus 5 is 5e, and so on. In the ELF header, file offset 54 corresponds to virtual address 54800408 in Little Endian. So our buffer at file offset 76 corresponds to address 76800408. And the length of the segment is 80 minus 54 equals 2c. We convert this file into a proper binary by the method of the last video. We run it, and it prints hello world.